Anyway, let's move on to the week's biggest film, the one that everyone's been talking about. Everyone's got an opinion. Everybody's seen it, maybe. Um, it's Captain America: Civil War. Get Civil it. War. Epic. It need, when it, with a film this big and this epic, it needs an epic delivery. Yeah. So. They got finished. Yep. Yeah, fair yep. enough. So well, this is the second Titanic battle of the superheroes <laughs> this year already. What? It's just Titanic, it's funny. Right, like it, Titanic is in relation to the Batman vs Superman. Quite possibly. Fracker. Mm-hmm. All right, there you go. That, then you know what Liam's thoughts on the film are. I think Titanic does sum it up, really. I think Titanic, yeah. t- that is the word I would use. Uh-huh. Very well done. Uh, did you get a chance to see Batman vs Superman, Jake? Uh, I didn't, thankfully. Didn't. I was so disheartened by Man of Steel that I just thought, I'm going to go ahead and not do that. That's fine. If I didn't, if I didn't do this show off the back of Man of Steel, I wouldn't have saw Batman Superman. But because it, because because we do, obviously, I saw it anyway. But no. all right, fair I was I'm not I'm not I'm not a fan of Zack Snyder's side of the world. Fair enough. I'd li- I'd literally just watch Nolan's Batman trilogy, <laughs> and it just like going into Snyder's world felt like it just total. Ugh. I think the thing is with Snyder, he wasn't uh, a director originally. He was yeah. a cinematography. Uh, cinematographer and when you put that in context kind of thing because he does make some stuff incredibly stylized yeah incredibly stylized incredibly uh, beautiful looking (coughs) things and I mean he's very good with choreography I mean like you look at 300 beautifully sort of choreographed fight scenes and whatnot. but the man is not a director I don't think I don't think he's uh, got the chops for it yet maybe I don't know maybe you'll get better but let's compare it to the new one in Civil War yeah so Captain America Civil War is a film that had just just a bit on its plate I mean similar to how Batman vs Superman had to deal with the starting a saga living up to many comic book influences I mean it was like the Dark Knight Returns and various other um, comic book influences and setting up an entire new legacy for the stories and continuing from Man of Steel Captain America Civil War not only had to act as the final part in the Captain America trilogy but also kick on the MCU as it's affectionately known as a well into the new sort of phase wait, is, is, is it new phase this, this is the beginning of this is this phase three now was this I the don't beginning know. I'm not sure actually well, well kick off the new beginning of the, of the MCU going towards the big payoff in Infinity War which is actually, did you see that? We didn't mention that in film news, did we? Actually, no, it's getting Infinity War is getting yeah. two new titles, so that it's not going to be called Part One and Part Two anymore. So yeah, uh, it not only had to do that, it had to end as the the sort of what, the last massive sort of flashpoint before Infinity War, mm. and now and then move on and not only do that, tell the entire story of the Civil War comic, or well, or their interpretation of it in this film. So no pressure there. The Russells who have come. They've come a pretty long way, haven't they? The Russells. They have. Yeah, they mean, uh, from. I mean, if you don't know, they were on a show called Community, mm-hmm. which I mean, obviously, there uh, lots of great work there. They did the Painball episodes. If you're curious about what they did, and they did Winter Soldier, which is many people many people's favourite Marvel film of all time, <laughs> which is. <coughs> keep talking. Yeah, yeah, just because I'm dying. I, I, keep talking. It's fine. Yeah. Just, uh, did you mention you were ill? Today. No, but it didn't, I don't think it needs him. No, it's you okay. Can, you I, know, he, but I think you can hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody gets one. So in in the new one, we've got basically the Avengers have uh, they've inflicted so much damage over the years that they need to be regulated. And from the Avengers, where New York was trashed, all the way up to Winter Soldier, where Washington D.C. was trashed, up to Avengers Two, where the fictional island of Sokov, well, country of Sokovia, was trashed. The government have now realised that the Avengers are too de- dangerous to go unchecked, and they sort of form. Well, and William Hurt comes back as his mm-hmm. role from uh, the Incredible Hulk, which is nice tie into that film, which is generally forgotten because Edward Norton got recast. So the comedy comes back, and basically the government have put together the Sokovia Accords, which is basically a massive document, which means that the government control and approve when the Avengers are allowed to deploy and see if people and do things and basically operate as the Avengers. Steve Rogers being the patriotic Captain America all good and all's well as he is uh, obviously opposes this while Tony Stark, Iron Man, feeling guilt for the Avengers and for everything he's done and just generally having PTSD to what the things he's done in the past thinks this is a perfect idea and he's right behind it and they basically as the situation descends <laughs> I mean uh, they decide well this is not going to end well and all of the heroes gather together on the two sides the civil war and it sort of descends from there mm. it's yeah yes it's, it's def- there's definitely a war th- there's definitely a civil war now this is by far the smartest Marvel film that they've made hmm. because it takes its time to sort of I mean a, a lot of the Marvel films it's I mean 
we can tell that from 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 watching the progression of the Marvel films that every every installment in the franchise the scale gets bigger the relationships get trickier and new sort of battles and villains enter the fray and it, it, it's always gearing up a gear and they sometimes forget that there are these personal relationships at stake but when they do remember that these are just people at the fray and I know there's a lot of you know criticism and laughs directed towards Jeremy Renner's Secret Bond <laughs> and Avengers 2 but that's character development you know that's yeah. realising that these people are real people with real lives and they, they, they make sure not to forget that and there's always got those sort of personal relationships at heart and while Batman vs Superman also did that I'm not comparing them here because that's stupid why would you do that although they are essentially the same yeah films. but they're very different styles but I mean, in Batman vs Superman th- that is obviously one of the key themes about a family and personal relationships but it's a lot more ham-fisted than a certain moment involving a name uh, of, I even uh, whispered yeah. at your own point, didn't I? When it, yeah. looked like, it looked like it would, like where Batman Superman would have would have done what they did. Yeah, Civil War did something different, which yeah. works a lot better. Uh, so in, in in this film, uh, basically, it's another incident where they are chasing down Crossbones, Frank Grillo from the last film, from uh, from Winter Soldier, who's now a new sort of supervillain who's scarred and messed up and he's sort of causing them problems as he comes into the scene the Avengers well after collateral damage incident which kills a few diplomats from another African country because they're in Lagos and basically that results in massive collateral damage and the political pressure that mounts to install these new Sokovia Accords it, it allows the, the characters to sort of batter off each other not with fists but with words you know in, in that sort of can't be aspect the fact that they are allowed proper conversations and they're allowed to elucidate and have these sort of musings on, on what is right what and vigilantism and just general stuff about being a superhero in general and that's really good to see because these are amazing actors that mm-hmm. they have cast and it's nice to see them do something where they're acting with people rather than acting with a green screen or acting with like a bunch of practical effects and uh, even though it, it, it is a Marvel film still and there are have got to be those fights and I'll get I'll get to those but <laughs> it, it does spend plenty of time dealing with its character relationships and dealing with the people at its core to allow itself to be something more than it could have been at the start and the fact that it does remember to continue Bucky and and Steve's story from mm. the Winter Soldier and from the original Captain America and take its time to be the closing Captain America chapter at the same time as being this massive civil war where these two sides are warring that is massive into its credits because it never forgets the personal relationships at stake and right enough of you yeah. Jake you've read the comics I have uh, well I haven't read all of them because the civil war in the comics was um, for lack of a better word huge it yeah. was uh, obviously the, I've read the uh, the main arc Mm-hmm. Uh, the one that uh, centers around uh, Tony Stark and Captain America. However, during the time of the Civil War, there is not a character in the Marvel Universe that did not have a story that ran completely parallel to mm-hmm. um, the Civil War. Yeah. So the more comics you were reading at the time, the more of a fully sort of fleshed out story you got. Um, so yeah, I suppose I suppose you could say I have a little bit of a, um, uh, a unique perspective on this, having read even just the main one, but. Uh, uh, there was a lot of things uh, in the comics they did that weren't really possible in the film. Right. I don't think. They, were, uh, they actually changed the legislation quite right, a bit. Right, okay. Uh, interesting fact. Um, with uh, Captain America, um, he is fighting um, for what he believes in because uh, he doesn't want to become just another tool of the government. Mm. Uh, his, uh, he, I believe, what he says in the film is, uh, "What if, uh, what if they deploy us to something we don't agree with? Uh, what if there is um, a, something going on, and they some... stop us from going out to, to deal yeah, with this? If, if, what if that's something I, be- we believe that we should go and sort that? That's something that it has to be done, and the government says no, you can't do that." Uh, so Stephen, uh, Stephen, Stephen Rogers, Stephen Rogers, Stephen Rogers. Stephen Rogers. guy from down my street. But uh, <laughs> yeah, Steve, um, Steve sort of opposes that. However, uh, they couldn't have done it the way they did it in the comics originally because they haven't actually included the smaller characters into the cinematic universe. Yeah, uh, such that, as that, that's kind of the problems with contracts and deals. No, and stuff. Um, well, weirdly, it's. Uh, it's it's characters that do exist in the cinematic universe, yeah, but haven't been incorporated <clears throat> into it. Uh, so, for example, we know that uh, Daredevil and Jessica Jones yeah. exist in the same universe, and we know that Jessica Jones exists in the same universe as uh, obviously the cinematic universe because yeah. they they mention a big green guy <laughs> and uh, the Battle of New York kind of thing. So we know that Daredevil and Jessica Jones exist in the cinematic universe, uh, but obviously Daredevil has a 
huge, huge part to play in um, in uh, Civil the Civil War. Yeah. Um, but what's really interesting is uh, what Captain America is fighting for is um, different in the comics in that it's uh, all my um, like all my mates that are lower down on the scale kind of thing. The guys that aren't going out to save the world. You've got Spider Man obviously protecting Queens, mm-hmm. and you've got um, Daredevil protecting Hell's Kitchen. Guys like that are gonna get um, gonna get messed over because uh, they're gonna have their secret identities revealed. Yeah. Obviously, that doesn't matter to Tony Stark because uh, he is a massive ball of ego. He likes it. He loves it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like you know, it's that that the f- f- smile on his face at the end of the first Iron Man when mm, he yeah. he, re- he does the I am Iron Man and you know the Black Sabbath yeah. comes in and it's. And I, I think that's why I love this film so much because it is that duality between Steve and Tony. You know, you've got the man who think they both think they're doing the perfect right. You know, one yeah. of them because it's the patriotism of doing rights for America and the freedom of justice and the fact that he is a man out of time. And then you've got this man who is sort of bitter with PTSD and fueled with envy that and well, fueled with guilt and and just general negative feelings over the fact that he was responsible for creating Ultron and Avengers Two and all of the weapons he created in the original Iron Man. You know, he killed him one of Maximoff's parents and that, that's what led to her mm. hating him originally so he's got a lot of guilt and he feels like this might be the one thing he gets to do that's right and in the opening scene he's confronted by a lady who says that my son was killed in, a, in an aid mission to um, Sokovia and it's your fault that she di- he died and you can see I mean Robert Downey Jr. just gets some amazing scenes he actually act. acts yeah and, I... and, and as the tension escalates it just every single character gets their own moment to shine and in that airport scene that has been seen in the trailer you get probably the best action scene that Marvel have done if not any superhero film I've done because every single character and in the film itself gets their moment to shine whether that be relatively big or based to a cameo you get to see all of their personalities all of their quirks shine through all of their qualities and you get to see why they are there and that's the benefits of having a built up cinematic universe rather than throwing all of your toys into one basket like the like Batman vs Superman tried to do and mm. in this you've got something where they can all shine where they all get the moments and Spider-Man introduced perfectly Black Panther introduced very well <coughs> they all get their chance to shine and as it escalates you feel the brutality of these two men who just want to do right and all these people caught in the crossfire all these people getting injured and hurt and just you know they, even though they're great friends they are going at it so bad and the fact that in, in, in the last 15 minutes especially you get to see Robert Downey Jr. just some of the, the best acting I've seen in a superhero film and Chris Evans as well because it is it is savage I d- I as it reaches wanna, its conclusion I d- I do want to say that the uh, the sort of the final fight scene. Mm. Uh, I won't go into the spoiler territory. We can't, we can't say a like single that. thing about that. But no, but like I will say, my my lord, that was. I generally wow. thought there was going to be death. In that yeah. Scene. yeah. No, there was some really, really like hard hitting, yeah. sort of brutal, almost. It, it's uh, you could almost say they've taken influence from sort of uh, how successful the Netflix's uh, Daredevil has been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, in the sense that like it wasn't this sort of uh, child play cartoonish sort of thing it was like every punch felt really yeah. really brutal like you felt it the same way as you do in the first series of daredevil where it's like you know that the corridor fight scene yeah that is probably my favorite marvel moment ever like daredevil and uh, like the netflix series has been my favorite marvel thing they've yeah. done and i'm really really happy that um that's these shows influences sort of you can see it slowly seeping mm. into the yeah. um the cinematic universe mm. which is interesting because they managed to take the style of an 18 rated show and put it in a 12 a show <laughs> and it, they still kind of pulled yeah. it off quite yeah, well, exactly. well uh, civil, civil war lives and dies in the strength of relationships and that's why it works for well so well for me because even when they are punching each other to, well yeah, to close to close to death. And yeah. yeah, you feel every blow, and you you understand why because the relationships work so well. So it's a it's a properly well developed and well built movie, and I'm I'm excited for the Russells to start working on Infinity War. The, the or whatever were, it's going to be called. There were a couple scenes in that final, the couple moments in that final scene where I, uh, I I genuinely thought one of them was going to die. Yeah, yeah. I and I mean that was uh, really really fantastic in the sense that I've not felt that kind of peril. Yeah, before yeah. in a Marvel my mouth film. was hanging open. I didn't think we'd go yeah. that far. You, you, I really did I, not expect. I just had such the strongest feeling that one of them wasn't mm-hmm. going to walk away from that. The score was perfect in that moment as well. It was a, it was a decent score in, in, in total, to be honest. But mm. then that, and it reached a crescendo really well.